Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, I'm Lisa Cole Kotler, and I am the CEO of Canadian Hadassah Wietso. It is my great pleasure to introduce our, our chair of the Legacy Circle campaign, Marla Dan, to say a few uh, remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my great pleasure to welcome you today and to thank you for your support. I'm Marla Dan, past national president and chair of our Legacy Circle campaign. Since the introduction of the CHW Legacy Circle, my husband Aubrey and I signed up to make this special commitment. While we've included CHW in our will, we view all our donations to CHW as a long-term investment in the organization to ensure its growth and succession. Once you visit Israel, tour our projects, and meet the women, children, and family whose lives are impacted through your philanthropy, you'll be inspired. Whether it's a life-saving treatment provided at Hadassah Hospital or Shamir Medical Center, a caring and devoted educator teaching at-risk youth, or the helping hand of a WITSO social worker putting a package of essential needs into the hands of a desperate woman, leaving the shelter with her four children to start over safely and finally break the cycle of violence, you'll understand why your support matters. CHW funded projects provide the difference for many between a chance at a life or falling through the cracks. If you're considering a legacy gift to CHW, I urge you to sit down and discuss your intentions with your family. Share your passion and your priorities for healthcare, education, or social services so that your wishes become your legacy and the gift you make is meaningful to you, yet still has a huge impact for generations to come. The CHW Legacy Circle enables our supporters to make a significant gift that they might not be equipped to give during their lifetime. Your gift ensures the sustainability of the organization at our projects in Israel and here in Canada. It's now my pleasure to introduce our new CEO, Lisa Colt Kotler, to say a few words about our Enhanced Legacy Circle program. Thank you so much, Marla, for the warm welcome and introducing uh, all of us today. It is uh, my pleasure to speak with you about our Legacy Circle program and the legacy that you leave behind. As members of our CHW extended family, I think together we share a vision of a much better world. And that vision starts with you and the impact that you make by changing lives providing hope and building futures for women and children, both here in Canada and in Israel, and benefiting our programs, projects, and services for healthcare education and certainly social services. Um, the first step to creating a legacy gift starts today by learning more about how you can structure a gift while enjoying tax and financial advantages. And that's why we've prepared this wonderful program for you and invited Mark Halpern to speak. Mark will explain the different ways that you can leave a gift to CHW and structure it to significantly reduce your estate taxes while decreasing the burden that you leave on your heirs and your family. Making a planned gift to CHW allows you to take care of your CHW extended family as well, at, while still ensuring the future for your loved ones. Um, I want to briefly share our Enhanced Legacy Circle program that we recently um, uh, 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 added to and, and tell you all the wonderful recognition opportunities um, when you join our Legacy Circle. When you join our Legacy Circle or decide that you want to, please let me know. Um, and we, it would be our pleasure to invite you to share your CHW story with us through either a multimedia virtual art workshop that we're gonna be launching this spring or to tell your story in writing or verbally. 
um, upon your um, notification, we'll add you to our legacy circle membership, um, recognizing your support in our program in the Aura magazine, and that'll be in perpetuity. You'll receive a beautiful legacy circle pin, which Marla was wearing on her lapel. You'll get a chance to see that again, uh, if she's not on your screen right now. And um, upon your passing, um, we will be planting a fruit bearing tree at one of our youth villages, either CHW Hadassim or Nahalal, which will um, connect your roots your memory with, with our roots and your legacy with the Israeli homeland. Um, the fruit bearing tree provides sustainability, sustenance and financial security for the youth village. And lastly, uh, we will be um, uh, um, providing the Yordsite prayer in the Abel Synagogue at Hadassah University Medical Center, which is where the Chagall, beautiful Chagall windows are featured um, annually in your memory. So we've enhanced our program to provide you ever more recognition, identifying your legacy and forever um, memorializing your, your um, position in our family. Um, it's really important that the wording in your, uh, either in your will or in your insurance policy identifies CHW correctly um, and that you use our legal name. So it's really essential that you connect with me directly, either by phone or by email, and let me know your intentions so that we can ensure that you have uh, identified CHW properly. It's now my pleasure to increase, to increase, to introduce our guest speaker, Mark Halpern, CEO of WealthInsurance.com. Mark is Canada's trust, trusted insurance advisor. Uh, he's a certified financial planner, trust and estate practitioner, master financial advisor, philanthropy, and has helped many business owners, entrepreneurs, professionals, and affluent families for over 30 years. Mark and his team provide tax advantaged insurance solutions to protect families and their businesses, working closely with accountants, lawyers, bankers, and other financial professionals to provide comprehensive estate planning solutions for their clients. Mark also is a very busy man. He sits on multiple professional advisory boards, including St. Mike's, St. Joseph's, Sick Kids Hospital, TV Ontario as a trustee. And, and he's also chair of the professional advisory committee at the Jewish Foundation of Greater Toronto. Mark and his team pledged to raise over a million dollars a year in sure. planned gifts. And I'm uh, sorry, a million, 100 million, 100 million. $100 million a year in planned gifts. And just this year, you've raised over, what, $61 million so far, Mark? $61 million, yes. Amazing, just amazing. Um, he's pretty dynamic. And uh, he was invited by Moses Neimer for, to speak for Idea City in a topic called The New Philanthropy. So it's a TED Talk that we invite you to enjoy. Um, Mark, can you share that with us afterwards, a link or something that we can Absolutely. send out to all Absolutely. our participants? Yeah. That would be so Mark's going to, uh, to present to you um, just before the presentation. We want to share our legacy video with you, um, and then he will present. And then following that, he'll take questions for a few minutes. Um, you can type your questions into the chat section, and uh, Marlon will read them out on your behalf. So I want to thank you all so much for joining us today and ask um, Jennifer to play the video for you. We know you share our vision of a better world. As your partner in philanthropy, CHW can help turn your vision into reality. It starts now and continues with the legacy you leave behind. It is a seed you plant today that grows into something strong, something that will help make a difference in the lives of so many women and children in need. Through the lasting friendships you've built over the years with CHW and our vital projects that have touched your life, 
together, we can become part of your extended family. Making a planned gift to CHW allows you to take care of your extended CHW family while still ensuring the future of your loved ones. Consider a planned gift to enjoy significant tax and financial advantages while providing financial security for our projects in Israel to sustain them for generations to come. Your giving lives on by changing lives, providing hope, and building futures. A fruit-bearing tree will be planted at one of our youth villages in your memory, providing sustainability, sustenance, and financial security. The roots of your tree will connect your memory with our homeland and the legacy you created at CHW. Your legacy will live on. Learn how you can become a member of our Legacy Circle today. That's great. Lisa, thank you. That's a beautiful video. Hopefully you can all hear me. And, uh, and it's really quite an honor to be here today to speak to everyone. And it's really on the back of being a young man and my mother of blessed memory being part of Hadassah back in the day and going to the bazaar, which was like a teenager's dream. And all I can do is I smell the food. So now, of course there was also, there was the nash and the, and the, and the matzias that you could find along the way, but it was really an event and uh, we miss it. It would be nice one day to be in a situation where we can all be back together again and, and, and being engaged like that. So it's very special to be here. I know she'd be very proud. Um, it's uh, just as a background, it's, it's been a very, very busy time for me this past year, as I'm sure with this pandemic, it's, it's changed a lot of our lives. But the, at the high end, it's been that, you know, I've been trying to convince people for 30 years that one day they're going to die or retire or get sick and nobody believed me. And then it took a global plague to happen. And suddenly people are much more aware of their mortality, but really they're aware of their incompletions. They don't have wills in place. They don't have powers of attorney. People don't know where all their things are, insurance, their structures. But the one area that really is getting attention is the area of legacy. People have given money and they've been very generous, but they haven't really created a legacy for themselves or their families or do what I call going from success to significance. So I'm hoping today to share a lot of really good ideas with you to help jumpstart this amazing legacy circle that CHW has undertaken under Lisa Colt, who I've worked with for many years. She, you guys are in very capable hands and hopefully you'll have some ideas to share with your family and share with your professional advisors and hopefully maintain and continue your partnership with CHW for many, many years to come. I'm just going to put up my presentation. I'm going to share it. Let me put the share. Uh, I want to be able to share. Yeah, that works. And make sure that this everybody can see this. Good. Thumbs up. Fantastic. So I'm going to share with you some great ideas and we'll share some time at the end with questions and we'll go from there. First thing is, please make sure whatever we talk about, you get professional advice from your family and your professional advisors. I did a presentation where somebody acted on their own, got a $45,000 tax bill from the CRA and called me and said, why did I get this? And I said, well, you know, you wouldn't exactly do brain surgery on yourself unless you went to see a, a brain surgeon. So please be very careful with that. A lot has changed. We have a new government. The good news is they're going to be introducing a new simplifies tax form with only one question going forward. How much money did you make? Send it to us. Now we joke around, but you're gonna see this is very true and why this presentation is so important about helping to maximize impact and minimize taxes. The reality is this, taxes are going up. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when you're gonna see a possible inheritance tax, a wealth, in ta wealth tax, the capital gains tax for sure will be going up, you know, HST, income taxes. I mean, how else are we gonna be able to pay for all the money that's being spent? So that's one thing to keep on your mind. The second thing is that most people have done investing and they've appreciated their assets, but they haven't done any planning. And we'll talk about that. Planning is very important, as you'll see as we go along. The other thing is we're now in uh, an information age, or I'll call it a misinformation age. People are going online to find things out, or they're going to their advisors who may be more reactive as opposed to proactive, but we still really require bespoke attention based on our own 
a particular estate situation. And that's very important. All of us have heard of the wonderful ad called Freedom 55. Well, Freedom 55 today is when your youngest child is 55. And, and I, we joke around about that, but it's true. Think of it. Kids getting out of school, let alone with their bills and their loans and trying to find real estate and trying to find a job, we have to take care of our kids longer. That's why that planning is so important. The good news is people are really looking to have more meaning in their life. They want to do good. They'll actually pay more than retail if there happens to be a social responsible additive to whatever they're doing. So that's the good part. And that's something we're going to be speaking about. As I mentioned, uh, there, there's, a, or wanted to mention this, there's an initiative that you're going to hear a lot about called Willpower. It was actually launched this past September by the Canadian Association of Gift Planners, but it actually started out of the UK over 10 years ago. And over 10 years ago, they did the research to show that of all people in the UK who had a will, only 5% put a gift in it for charity. So what they did was they went on an initiative for 10 years where they gathered money from all these nonprofits and they bought retail, TV, radio, billboard, bus shelter advertising with a very simple and elegant message leave a gift in your will. After 10 years, the statistic went from 5% to 9%, which represents $50 billion of new charity that's going to be coming into the UK. That's B billion. Okay. So we've launched this now in Canada in September with the goal being $40 billion of new charity. And you're going to see why this is really important because for CHW, certainly they can be doing their own willpower and we'll see the advantages of that. Now, I started 30 years ago professionally in this business, but my real start in this business was on March the 8th, 1974. And that's why my father of blessed memory died of a massive heart attack at the age of 50. I was 11. I was the youngest of four boys. And my mother, who was 48 at the time, had to go back to work to support our family. Unfortunately, my father was a very busy engineer. There was no will, very little savings, and no life insurance. So it was hard for us, but we all managed, thank God. But fast forward, I work with some of the most successful business owners and entrepreneurs and retirees and wealthy families, and you'd think they'd have it all organized. But I'm going to tell you that 80% of the time, it's not true. Everybody's so busy looking after everything and everyone else that they don't have basic planning in place. So we get involved in three areas. One is in estate planning, which is really making sure that your financial uh, architecture and your furniture still lines up from when you started. The second area that we're involved with is tax minimization strategies, ways to preserve or keep those taxes for your family. And the third area is philanthropy, helping families create legacies, often by converting taxes into charity. And, and that's really what we're going to go through together. I wish pe I could tell you that people call me and say, Mark, I want to give $10 million to this charity or $5 million to this. Most of the time, we have to go through a holistic or comprehensive uh, look at somebody's uh, planning, uh, you know, from 30,000 feet up. And these are all things that each of you need to be cognizant of. The last thing we speak about at the end, as you can see, is charitable plan giving. And the reason we do that is because for most people in Canada, once you get to be 65 plus most people have achieved a certain amount of success and hopefully their estate is going to continue to grow or levelize or, or reduce. But unless they were to invest all their money in a penny stock or start spending frivolously, chances are they're going to have more money when they die than what they have today, which means that they're really the custodian or trustee for the next generation. What they don't realize is that they're partnering with the tax department on that. So planning means make sure you have a big check mark. You're never going to run out of money. You know, you can give money to your kids, you can buy a recreational property, whatever. But here are the taxes today. Here are the taxes at life expectancy. And here's the never spend money that I'm just paying taxes on. Can I use some of that to preserve my estate for my family or look at introducing charity into the equation. And that's because there's lots of taxes. Here's just a basket of things that are all taxable in Canada. Any appreciation on these assets means that the government wants a piece of those. Here are the taxes just payable in Ontario. If you have RSPs, risks, and pensions, those can be taxed around 54% if you don't have a spouse. 
capital gains, any appreciated shares or investment real estate or business equity, government's going to want 27% of the gains. If you have money sitting in a holding company, it could be anywhere between 47 and 70% without planning. There's passive tax, there's probate tax. What I'm trying to say is at the end of the day, you're not as rich as you think you are. And I met with a lovely 80-year-old woman recently who was very proud at what she'd accomplished. She was worth about $10 million. And she had done all of her own investment. She was a widow. And I said, I said, you know, Sandra, you're really not worth $10 million. You're only worth six and a half million dollars. Anyway, I won't say the words or the language that came out of her mouth. It wasn't pleasant, but I can tell you that she didn't realize that she was only worth six and a half million dollars. So with proper planning, we were able to still get 10 million to her family, a bunch of money to charity, and very little to the government. That that's what it takes is planning. And here's really the main thing everyone should realize. All of us have three possible beneficiaries to our estate. You have your family, you have the government, and you've got charity. And each of us can pick two. Which two would you pick? Most people say, I take family and charity. So with proper planning, you can be remembered for leaving a big check to a charity that you love or charities, as opposed to writing a big check to the tax department. And that's really what the goal is here. And, and really, let's face it, taxes are important. They're, they're the thing that keep our beautiful social fabric going. But I love this quote from Morgan Stanley. You must pay taxes. There's no law that says, but there's no law that says you have to leave a tip. Okay, so let's pay our taxes, but you don't have to give more. So how do we do that? We actually create what we call accidental philanthropists or accidental philanthropy. There are two kinds of people who give money. There are those people who just, their DNA, they grew up giving charity, tzedakah, they're good at it. And then there are those people who don't. As a matter of fact, of the 38 million Canadians and everyone who actually submits a tax return, only 5 million people give to charity, 5 million out of the 38 million in our country. Okay, that we're talking about taxpayers. So if those people realize that they have a choice where their taxes go and they could give them to charity, suddenly they become accidental philanthropists. And the people who are already giving now realize, oh, I can give more for the same cost or the same amount for less cost. And that's really where we want to get to. And here's just a list of what I consider the most appropriate accidental philanthropists. So if you identify in yourself in this, or you know other people who identify, just look at the list. Widows, divorcees, singles. We'll talk about that. Anybody who sold or will be selling a business or investment real estate or appreciated securities, the year they're going to have their biggest tax means it's also the year they can give their most to charity and get the money back to their family. Anybody who's done an estate freeze or will be doing an estate freeze or anyone has taxes due coming this April, right now is the best time. You know, you have taxes due this coming April and you have some appreciated non-registered assets like stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, and they've all... Now's the time to donate those. We'll talk about that soon. If you have a foundation or a donor advised fund, there's ways for you to create transformational charity with that money. If you have an existing life insurance policy you no longer need, that's a very big asset that you could turn, you could help CHW with. If you know you're going to have a state tax bill on death, great time to be an accidental philanthropist. And certainly if you've already left money in a will with a bequest, you can even do better than that. And let's talk the simple math. Keep it very simple. For every $2 that you give to charity, you save a dollar of tax. Got it? So $2 to charity saves a dollar of tax. And this is all from the government. And the government says that you can actually use your charitable donations to offset up to 75% of your annual tax bill, up to 75%. But on death, any contributions to charity can be used to offset up to 100% of your estate taxes, plus you can go one year back as well on your tax cycle. Or if you want, you can carry it forward five years. Whatever the case is, is that it really is a way to minimize your tax using philanthropy. Here's just a, a very quick list of some gifting options that most of you are familiar with, but we'll put a little bit of a, a, a twist on them. One, of course, is gifting in your will. Another is looking at your RSP or your RIF in terms of the beneficiary. Another is looking at gifting securities. And the last one is looking at gifting life insurance. So let's talk about gifting in your will, which is also known as a bequest. One way to do that is you can just change your will and include CHW for a specific amount or a specific percentage of your estate that will go to CHW. Remember, $2, of $2 donation 
saves $1 of tax. And if you don't want to change your will, then if you've got some registered money like RSPs and RIFs, go to your financial institution and you can get what's known as a multi-beneficiary designation form and make CHW the beneficiary for a dollar amount or a percentage of your registered money. Why registered money? Because so many of us have these big amounts of money in RSPs and RIFs that again, we just built up over the years and likely we don't necessarily need it to help us support us during our retirement. And in Canada, the most disadvantaged people are widows, divorcees, and singles. Why? Because if you die and you have a spouse, everything rolls over to your spouse tax-free. It's only on the second to die of a husband and wife that taxes are due. So if you're widowed, divorced, or singled, you're one incident away from a very large tax disposition. And it's not unusual here. If somebody has $2 million sitting in an RSP or a RIF and they die, their heirs are only going to get $920,000. So they're not worth $2 million. It's only nine twenty. dollars So with proper planning, we can actually set things up where their family can get a million and a half dollars versus 920 and a charity can get the $2 million of the registered money. Or there are some other strategies as well to use this money if it's not necessary to create charity. Just keep that in mind. Now, most people, when they give charity, they give cash, checks, or credit cards. But that's actually the most cost and tax inefficient way of giving. The government is, uh, has introduced over 25 pieces of legislation since 1995 to make it easier for people to give to charity. And one of those is through gifting securities, stocks, mutual funds, ETF segregated funds, not RSPs and RIFs, we're talking about non-registered. So here was somebody who used to give $50,000 a year for charity. That means he had to make 100,000, pay tax to have 50,000, donate the 50 to make to, to save 25,000 of tax. Now he sees, boy, I've got all this non-registered stock. And let's just say he has some stock worth $50,000 that cost him 10,000. So it's grown by 40,000. That's called the capital gain. If you were to sell that $50,000 of stock, you would pay a capital gains tax of $10,800. But the government says you can actually go ahead and donate those shares to charity, pay no capital gains tax, zero. So that 10,800 now becomes charity and you get a receipt for the full $50,000. So it's interesting of those 5 million people in Canada who actually give money to charity, it says only 5,000 are using securities for donations. This is a very powerful thing and you should be using this to give away money. This is how you should be doing your charity. So it's a great year end strategy right now to either set up a donor advised fund, which we'll talk about, or, you know, and, and then you can park money there and save taxes for April or donate to CHW right now with stock to offset some of those taxes that are going to be due in April. Uh, an even better way is if you have securities, appreciated securities that are sitting inside of a holding company or in your operating company, an investment company. So the difference here now is you'll get a $50,000 deduction for the company. So now the, sh the value of the company comes down by 50,000, but that gain of $40,000 can now come out of your company tax-free and you pay no capital gains taxes. So it's a lovely way, especially if you're gonna sell a business or something, consider doing something like that. And if you really wanna really maximize this, you can use life insurance to put the donation that you made to charity back into the hands of your kids. So again, it could be pennies on the dollars to set that up and it's a timing issue, but what a great way you're turning taxes into charity, saving taxes today and getting money back into your hands of your family, all while creating a legacy for CHW or other charities you're passionate about. Here are really the last final four of the tax-free assets that we have inside of the tax act one is your principal residence you know that 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 by the way they're looking at changing that it's just a matter of time that you're going to see they'll come up with a ceiling on principal residences where you'll have a tax-free amount and after that will be taxable tfsas are taxable but very small amount you can put aside lottery winnings are taxable here so don't buy your lottery tickets in the u.s and tax-exempt life insurance is also part of these final four. That means if you invest anywhere else, there's somebody from the CRA that you likely love that has their hand out that wants to participate in the success you've had with those assets. 
other than these four. So it's important to understand how these could help you with your family for planning a legacy and also for reducing taxes. And here's just an example of the after-tax cost of a donation, just to give you an idea that not all donations are the same. And I'm assuming here somebody's donating a million dollars. Okay, it's a lot. It's always scalable. Think of it. 10 divide by 10 is 100,000. Uh, you can get all the way to 10,000. But here, in the case of they're donating either cash or they're donating appreciated securities with a zero cost base. So imagine like cannabis stock or something, or they've got some flow through shares or they're using a life insurance policy. And here's the important part. This is the cost per dollar for a donation. If you donate cash, it costs you about 50 cents per dollar. If you donate public securities, it would cost you about 23 cents per dollar. If you use flow through shares, depending on what province you're in and what's available, they could cost anywhere between five and 15 cents per dollar. Or by using a life insurance policy, it could cost you as low as 12 cents per dollar. So imagine all of that to leave a million dollars for 12 cents per dollar. That's assuming again, some of the, the stuff on the bottom, which is using a, a joint last to die insurance policy for a family, but we'll come back to that. So let's talk about gifting of life insurance. All of us have old insurance policies that maybe were bought, you know, by our father or we, we needed it when we had young kids and we needed, you know, a roof over their head, food on their table and money for their kid for kids education. You could take that old insurance policy and donate it to CHW and actually get a fair market valuation for that policy today, get a big receipt to save you taxes and going forward, the premiums you pay are considered charitable donations. So I just did something for a woman in her late 70s. She had an old $150,000 insurance policy she didn't need anymore that was donated to charity. She got a valuation on it of 87,000. So that saves her $43,000 today or going forward for the next five years. And she's recognized for giving a $150,000 donation. And now going forward, the premiums are considered charitable donations. And she gets a receipt for that as well. How lovely. Sometimes if you have a really good old policy, the charity will actually pay for that policy going forward because it's a great investment for the charity as well. So that's one way. Another way is donate a new policy. You could, let's say somebody has a million dollar estate tax. Well, they could go ahead and get a $2 million insurance policy for pennies on the dollars and let the charity be the beneficiary of that upon their death. So the $2 million would go to charity, create a $2 million charitable receipt. And now the $1 million of estate tax is gone. And they're remembered for giving $2 million to charity as opposed to giving a million dollars to the tax department. The easiest way, though, is if you already have a life insurance policy, just change the beneficiary and put a certain percentage amount or a dollar amount that goes to CHW for the legacy circle. Lisa and their team will recognize you today for your legacy gift, even though it's hopefully not going to come to 120, but at least they'll see that you are connected to the organization and they can sort of plan accordingly to have hopefully tens of millions of dollars of money available in the future to help run their very important programs. Here's just an example uh, on the left side. Again, just this is a 60 year old couple and forget about insurance for a moment. Let's just say they were putting away $100,000 a year into investments over 15 years, so $1.5 million, and they were getting 4% on that and they were paying taxes. So they put away $1.5 million. At year 30, they'd have $2.3 million. Their money hadn't even doubled because of the tax grind. On the right hand side, we'd use an insurance policy to take that same $100,000 a year over 15 years. So that's $1.5 million. But here they're buying an insurance policy for $2.5 million. So 20 years later, the policy is worth $4.2 million. And by year, late, year 30, it's about $4.2 million, which means we've created almost $2 million more money for that family versus what they were doing already. So it's really something that you should give consideration to if you have never spent money. Here's a big secret. Life insurance can actually be owned and paid for by a private foundation or a donor advised fund. Many of the people who are listening either have private foundations or donor advised funds. You can have insurance owned by your donor advised fund, paid for by the donor advised fund, and the donor advised fund can be the beneficiary. So it's just a way of creating much more tzedakah, much more charity for your family to be able to distribute in perpetuity to the causes that you care about. 
other giving strategies. Well, we talked about having a private foundation. That's really, that requires costs to set up and annual reporting. And really that's for people who have, let's say at least a million dollars they wanna keep into a foundation. The other way is you can have what's known as a donor advised fund. That's like piggybacking a community foundation like the Jewish Foundation of Greater Toronto. You can actually use their foundation and then put your named foundation underneath it and have all the benefits of a private foundation. The difference is, is a private foundation is public. You can go to the CRA and see exactly what people have in their foundation, who's on the board and who they give money to. Whereas a donor advised fund is completely private. Nobody has to know where your money is. We mentioned flow through shares. If you're already giving charity, it's a way of giving charity at the least cost possible. If, the, if there are flow throughs that are available through very many companies, Pear Tree, Beartove, et cetera, there are many companies that can do this. It's worth looking into. Charitable gift annuities are a way of you getting actually an income from the charity by donating to them and you get an income for life. Plus you get a charitable donation for that amount that you gave to them. Again, it's very big business in the United States. Billions of dollars of charitable gift annuities are done. It's something if you need an income and you want to get a tax saving, it's something to consider. Charitable remainder trusts, again, are another way of leaving money or leaving uh, normally uh, investment real estate to get a benefit today, a tax benefit today, and use of that property while you're alive, but ultimately it goes to a charity. Return of premium life insurance, it's a way of giving an insurance policy, CHW, but upon your death, all the premiums come back to your family. So again, a wonderful thing. Policy preserver. That's if you ever have, in, in Canada, there's $7 billion of term life insurance that falls off the books every year because it becomes too expensive for people or they no longer need it. But you could actually take that term insurance and convert it without any medical into a permanent insurance policy and then donate it to CHW. You'll get a nice charitable receipt and going forward, as I said, the premiums will be charitable donations or we'll find a donor to fund that policy on behalf of CHW. The last thing I wanna to talk to you about is CPP philanthropy. This is something we created back in 2017 and it's a very simple idea. When you turn 65, you start receiving CPP in Canada. It works out to a husband and wife to about $26,000 a year. Most wealthy people don't need that $26,000. It's taxed, it's reinvested and it's taxed again. And when they leave this world, it's gone. You could take that $26,000 and you could get a $1.5 million life insurance policy. If it's owned by CHW, then the $26,000 from CPP is considered a donation. So you pay no taxes on your CPP and now you've created a million and a half dollar gift for CHW. Or alternatively, you could take the money from CPP, pay taxes on that, get that policy and make CHW the beneficiary of it, which will save your estate $750,000 of taxes, all using your CPP. Or the last one, which I really like, is use the CPP, get the insurance policy, make your kids the beneficiary of that, but donate your registered money to charity so that you're not paying 54% tax on that. Your family's gonna get about 50% more than they were supposed to, and a charity received a beautiful legacy gift to use in perpetuity for you and your family. Just some ideas. Last couple of things, because I only have five minutes left. I had a cardiologist who approached me. He had a, uh, a million dollar life insurance policy that he didn't need. So he wanted to cancel it. And I said, you know, well, Jonathan, why don't you consider donating it to charity? So we did. He donated it to four different charities. South Lake Hospital Foundation wrote a two-page article on him called The Cardiologist with Heart. And the Jewish Foundation recognized him in the Book of Life celebration as a philanthropist as well. So he went from drop that policy to suddenly being a philanthropist. And I remember when I saw the article, I called him. I said, Jonathan, like, where's my name in this article? Like, I didn't see it here. Because I knew there's not a chance, like most people, they become accidental philanthropists through the work that we do. Had another family who sold some real estate for $120 million, and they had a $20 million tax bill. 
and they were approached, they were introduced to me around philanthropy. Instead, we took $120 million, we took 40 million and created a private foundation, which now that $20 million of tax was gone. We then used life insurance to put the $40 million back into the hands of the family. So the beneficiaries are not crying. Everybody's happy, kids get their money. Charity got, we set up a beautiful foundation and we reduced those taxes. Private share donations, people who have company shares can donate those to charity and, and realize some amazing tax benefits. Or people who have an RSP or RIF that's sitting around that they don't need, there's ways for you to take that RSP or RIF and create, in one case, we had somebody with a, a $2 million RIF that instead of having a million dollars of tax, we created four and a half million dollars of charity with that. So that does require some attention. We looked at there's four kind of givers. There are those who want to be anonymous. Don't put my name anywhere. We know people like that. Others do it because they want to set an example for others to follow in their footsteps. And then there are those others who do it because they want to be remembered. They want their name somebody, someplace. And then there are those who know that it's great for business. It's, if you're philanthropic, it's really great for business. And here's just a lovely couple we worked with at St. Joe's who donated a million dollar life insurance policy. They're in the real estate business. And just between all of us, it costs them about $5,000 a year after tax for 20 years to be no, recognized for a million dollar gift today. Okay, and charities love it and they feel great. And, and you should also know when you do a legacy gift, generally over your lifetime, your donations to that charity are going to go up by as much as 40% because your partners, you want to make sure that charity lasts. Last thing, it's, it's really an emotional subject. And, and if I were to ask everybody on this call, do you know the names of your grandparents? Most of us know the names of their grandparents. But if I asked you, do you know the names of your great grandparents? Most of us don't know the names of our great grandparents. This is actually my great grandparents, Aaron and Liba Gross, in 1934 in Poland, unfortunately, before they died in the Holocaust. Imagine if on January the 1st, you received a check, an envelope in the mail, and inside there was a check for $10,000 from your great grandfather. You think you'd remember their name? You certainly would. So with proper planning, there's ways to be remembered. And, and this is really important because, you know, they say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. That's when weather conditions are perfect. But if there's wind, the apple's far from the tree. And when there's a tsunami like there is today, the apple doesn't even know it came from a tree. And we feel that through either religion, philanthropy, both, whatever it is, we need to pass along those legacies and values not as much to our children, but really to our grandchildren. And the way we see it is by setting up a legacy for your family that, that will be remembering you and also will be remembering the charities that you were very, very passionate about. We've got lots of great ideas on that. So as far as a wrap up, I call this the 48 hour rule. If this made any uh, uh, impression on you, please do something about it within the next 48 hours. Otherwise we're busy and you're gonna forget all about it. Speak to Lisa. Lisa is a great resource. She can help you. If you'd like, we have over 100 tax letter digests on this subject matter and one pagers and a lot of the case studies we talked about today. Please send me an email, mark at wealthinsurance.com. I'm happy to share those. And, and please connect with me on LinkedIn because I'm always posting about charity. Learn about it. Speak to your advisors, but don't ignore it. There's just too much on the line and too much that you could be doing for you and your family. And finally, consider your own CHD, CHW legacy gift. And here's just an example of your own $1 million life insurance gift. This is based on a single person, okay, male, female, paying into a policy for 10 years. They're a non-smoker. And here's the after-tax cost to give a million dollar gift over 10 years. And as you can see, as a 40 year old, it would be a female would be $100,000 to live a, leave a million dollar gift. And there is parts of this policy as well, where the charity could be using some of that money during your lifetime as well. It's not always just about at death. And if it's a joint policy, these prices could be less by up to 40%. So it really makes sense to get some information about this. And that is, the end of my presentation, I would just go ahead and say to you, um, the time to look after all of this is while the sun is shining. The world's been going crazy. Take advantage of this. It, it's, you know, I've had situations where people unfortunately had planned and waited, 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 and then they couldn't do what they wanted to do. So I'm going to, at this point, 
just uh, open up the uh, audience for any questions that you have. And please, you can send them to me privately or send them through the chat. And I think, Marla, you're running the question session, yeah, correct? That's great. Yeah, actually, there is a question here, Mark. So if anybody has a question, um, there's that little section in there you can put for Q&A and send a, a question to me. Um, the first question that I have is, when's the best time to start creating a legacy? Uh, it's, a, it's a great question. I, I'd say it's today, right? Um, and, and it really doesn't matter, you know, at what stage of the game you're at. You can be a young person, you can be an older person. It really comes back to planning. And if there's ways for you to sit down and say, hey, there's money that I'm giving away to the tax department that I could be using for charity, well, that's that really comes down to the planning. So we've never been in a better time to actually start that process right now. So, you know, that's one, that's one time to do it. another is if you have some sort of life event, you know, you have an inheritance, you know, you've sold some, you know, you know real estate, or you've sold a business, those life cycle events are times also to think, you know, maybe there's something that I could be doing, we kind of get stops and get our attention. That's for sure. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, here's another question. Um, how wealthy does somebody have to be in order to make a difference? You know, it, it, people always think the word philanthropy means Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos. Those guys are philanthropists. Who am I? I was a school teacher. I have a little RSP, a little insurance policy. The beautiful part is that you don't have to be rich to be a philanthropist. You know, it, it, it's really, again, comes back to the planning. And it can be as small as leaving a, uh, a $10,000 donation in your will. Remember, $10,000 will generate a, a receipt that will save your tax, will save your estate $5,000, which means that it's only costing you $5,000 to give a $10,000 donation. And it's not even going to move the dial likely in your estate planning at all. You know, as long as you've done the planning and again, charity begins at home. We got to make sure our kids are looked after our grandkids, all the rest of it, but it's not about disinheriting them. It's about adopting a cause that's important to you. And with all the tax advantages that you have, making it very, very painless in order to do that. Okay, uh, here's another question. Um, do you require a medical exam to arrange a life insurance policy to donate to CHW? So again, it all depends on your age and your health and all the rest of it. One of the advantage, the reason our, we've been so busy this past year is that the insurance companies relax the underwriting on insurance because no nurses could go to people's homes to take blood and urine and all that. So believe it or not, we can get people up to $5 million of life insurance today with no medical, a 20 minute phone call. And again, that's based on somebody, let's say 60 years of age and lower. But if somebody is older, then, you know, certainly there are, it has been relaxed and there are ways if they, if they go to an executive medical place, you know, like Cleveland Clinic or MedCan or whatever, they'll use that information. So each situation is unique and uh, depending on the, the size of the policy, it could be very, very little work uh, and very little effort. Uh, or if it's a bigger policy and perhaps somebody has, you know, a bunch of underlying medical conditions that might be a little bit more cumbersome, but there are companies out there that will also do no medical insurance. So I think each situation is going to be unique. Okay. And I have one last question for you and then uh, we'll move along. Um, I have a $50,000 insurance policy that my late father bought me for when I was a kid. Can I donate that to CHW? How do I do that? Ah, it's great. Imagine like, again, as long as your planning is looked after and that 50,000 isn't needed by your family for food, you know, and, uh, and, and having a roof over their head, then the first thing would be is, we can actually look at that policy and we can get an independent actuary to put a fair market value on that policy. Depending on your age and your health, that valuation could be anywhere between 25 to 75% of that value of the policy. So imagine it could be a, a $25,000 uh, donation receipt where you give the $50,000 policy to CHW, where they recognize you as giving 50,000 and you get a $25,000 receipt today that saves you $12,500 of taxes. Again, just moving some furniture around that you don't necessarily need 
but it's going to make a huge difference to CHW. It's going to contribute to this legacy circle. And it's really going to make a big difference to your family, especially if they see that you're being recognized for doing something so great for an organization that you care so much about. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm going to close the questions for now. Um, if anybody has any questions that they want to ask and they didn't ask, please, you know, uh, send an email to Lisa, pick up the phone, call Lisa, and she can also um, get questions to Mark and, and uh, connect the, you with Mark if you need to be. And uh, thank you, Mark. We appreciate um, this information. It was fantastic. Very thought provoking. Very right. Very Great. I'm always available to answer any question or work with you and your family and your professional advisors. You know, it's it, it's it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure type of work that I do. So, uh, Marla, thank you very much. At this point, I'm going to take over. Now the press, the questions and answers are done, and it's my it's my pleasure now to introduce the next speaker to share her personal story with you. Susan Abramowitz has been a CHW volunteer for more than 25 years. She served as center president in Montreal and served three terms as national director. Professionally, she's provided strategic counsel to numerous Canadian charities while working on their direct marketing agency side and is currently director of annual giving at the Montreal Children's Hospital, Montreal Children's Hospital Foundation. Susan is married and has two children at university, one of whom is dyslexic, which enriched her connection to both CHW Netanya Technological High School and CHW Hadassim Children and Youth Village. I turn the webinar over to Susan to say a few words. Susan, you're on mute. You're on mute, Susan. We have to say that at least one time during what? the meeting. At least once. <laughs> So I was saying thank you, Mark. And I want to say uh, that listening to you today actually made me even more excited about my decision. Um, so let me tell you a little bit really quickly my legacy circle story. So as Mark explained, uh, I've, uh, I've spent much of my career in philanthropy. Uh, so legacy giving is something I've been familiar with for years. It just wasn't something I thought about. And that is until my synagogue joined a North America-wide program that helps local Jewish organizations promote legacy giving. That's when I became my synagogue's legacy giving co-chair. And that is where my legacy story, circle story begins. So for me, making a decision like this uh, is a journey. And I know it's different for everyone. And while I expected it to be a no brainer, it actually was a long process of really thinking about which kinds of charities are most meaningful to me and where I wanted to leave my mark. Um, you know, C CHW is on my list because it's been such an important part of my adult life. So I was 23 when I went to Israel for an Ulpan. It was a formative experience. And when I came home, I was determined to join an organization that raises money for Israel. I was invited to a Canadian Hadassah Witzel meeting. I visited the projects in 2008. And today it remains really an indelible part of who I am. It just is. At the same time, I, I know that leaving a legacy, it's a teachable moment because it's about the values you want to pass on to the next generation. So. For me, I see it as a profound statement about what mattered to me in this lifetime and what I hope will matter to, to the next generation in my family. So more specifically, that means leaving behind a vibrant Jewish community here in Montreal and funding CHW projects in Israel. Um, and when I started to go through the process, I realized, you know, an important part of this process will also include a discussion with my children. They're 20 and 22. It's one way to make them feel part of the process. We haven't had the conversation yet. They know that we've been, uh, my husband and I have been talking about redoing our wills. Uh, so they know it's something that's in, in the works. 
Um, but I also expect that CHW is going to involve them in the implementation of my donation in some way. So I, I really want them to understand what was most meaningful to me about my connection with CHW. And I expect the conversation is going to be a positive one. So my legacy journey started in late 2019. Um, but it was really over the course of the pandemic that I also realized that giving a legacy now in my 50s is not too early. In fact, it's exactly the right moment. So I hope that, you know, you'll join me in making um, a legacy circle donation. And listen, if anybody wants to ask me questions about the process and so on, I'd be happy to chat. Thank That's you. Cool. Thank yeah. you, Susan and Mark. I'm Elena Latsky, CHW National President. I hope that you enjoyed today's webinar presented by trusted advisor Mark Halpern, CEO of WealthInsurance.com. CHW has entered a period of transition and change. With the appointment of Lisa, along with our National Board of Directors, we are implementing significant changes that will move the organization forward into the 21st century. We are developing strategies and programs that will attract a new generation of supporters to join our CHW family, a family with a rich history. Our vision is to empower women and their families, both in Israel and here in Canada, with uncompromised access to excellence in healthcare, education, and social services. Our future will focus on impact and the investment that we can make to change lives, provide hope, and build futures. For over 100 years, CHW has made a positive and lasting impact on the very fabric of Israeli society by transforming the lives of women, children, and families. This is our vision for the future, but a vision is just a dream. Your commitment to join our legacy circle makes our dream a reality. And with that, the impact on future generations. I hope that you will join me and many other dedicated and passionate CHW donors who have included CHW in their estate plans by notifying the national office of your intent to make a planned gift. It is very easy to do Contact Lisa to discuss your interest and she will work with you to help you fulfill your philanthropic goals. Our heartfelt appreciation to Mark Halpern for his interesting and informative presentation. Many thanks to Susan Abramowitz for your time today to share your personal story with us. Finally, thank you to all of you for joining us today. I want to remind you about our next event taking place on Sunday, October 31st at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Our guest speaker is Professor Dina Shahar from Hadassah Academic College, who will be discussing women in innovation at our annual general meeting. You are all welcome to attend. You can register online from our website at chw.ca. This concludes today's program. Thank you all so much again for your time and enjoy the rest of your day.